So today I'll be going over the free body diagram, which is something I've showed in the past, but a little bit more in depth and what exactly it's used for, as well as going over the reactionary forces of the systems that we'll be analyzing. So in some of my previous videos, we've actually went over analyzing examples such as this as a beam with its supports. You have a roller here and you have a hinge and each, each of its supports has its own reaction. The hinge, for example, has a reaction force in the y direction as well as in the x direction. And when it comes to rollers, the, the reactionary force is always perpendicular to the surface or the or what's also called normal to the surface normal or perpendicular essentially means the same thing so the reactionary forces for a roller is always normal to the surface or perpendicular to the surface so for a roller your reactionary force is always along the y direction for a hinge you have both a x and a y component for the reactionary force for this specific support now you can always refer to your your book that you're using for your your course in statics which includes a table a comprehensive table of all the different uh, supports and the reactionary forces this is something i recommend everyone go ahead and study um, little by little, the more problems you do, the easier it gets, the more intuitive it'll be to determine like what f what reactionary forces um, will you be seeing depending on the support. So I'll go ahead and show an image of that table um, just so you could always go back or reference it. It should be included in your textbook for statics. So let's go ahead and do some example problems to further solidify the concept of drawing a free body diagram, which is nothing more than drawing the object that we're analyzing and the external forces that are being applied to without necessarily having to draw those supports or structures um, around surrounding the object. So the problem statement for this example is draw the free body diagram of the uniform bar which has a mass of 100 kilograms and a center of mass at point G. The supports A, B, and C are smooth. So let's go ahead and draw the free body diagram. So for the st first step, of course, is to basically draw the object isolated from the its surroundings. So let's go ahead and do that. So we went ahead and drew the the beam here, and we have the respective points A, B, C, and G. Now I'm not gonna I'm not gonna go ahead and draw all the dimensions since we do have it in the image above. But one thing to note is this beam is making contact at points A, B, and C, and this means since it has a mass of 100 kilograms, that means we have the weight being applied to the center of mass, which is point G. In this case, we have the weight weighing down the bar itself, so mass times gravity. So this is the weight being applied at the center of mass of an object. Okay, that's step one. Of course, since it's laying on the ground, we're gonna have reactionary forces at those contact points. And one key, um, one key word that was mentioned in the problem statement was the supports at A, B, C are smooth. Essentially what that means is at that point, there will, there will only be one instantaneous point where it will contact the ground. So you will concentrate that force at that instantaneous point. And when th there's only contact at one point, it's always going to be normal. The force, the reactionary force is always going to be normal of the surface itself. So in this case, when we have the floor here, at point B is going to be perpendicular to the surface or normal to that surface. So that means this reactionary force here at B is only going to have the Y components, call it BY. This is the reactionary force of this one. Now for A, it's the same thing. It's a smooth, it's contacting the wall at one instantaneous point, and therefore the force is going to be normal to, the reactionary force will be normal to the surface. In this case, it's going to be horizontal. So the reactionary force at point A is only along the horizontal direction or the X coordinate. So we have A sub X here. Now for point C, we have it contacting at one instantaneous point and it needs to be perpendicular to the contact surface. In this case, the beam perpendicular, the force would be at 
this angle here, let's call it this one. Um, it's going to be both along the X and the Y direction. Let's just call it the magnitude C here. And so now the question is at what angle from, you, you could either use the, the horizontal or the vertical direction. In this case, let's go with the vertical and it's 30 degrees. Since we see that this um, beam is being elevated at a 30 degree angle, this um perpendicular force will have that same 30 degrees and so this is your free body diagram for this um, problem statement so as you can already tell it's pretty easy to determine when where to apply the weight which is always going to be the center of mass of an object but when it comes to the reactionary forces you need to know depending on what kind of support you have this will help you determine at what um, what angles will they be applied to is it just a force normal to the surface that's being being, um, in contact with do you have just a Y component or a X and a Y so those are things to keep in mind and so let's go ahead and do uh, another example now for this second second example we have draw the free body diagram of the beam which is pin supported at a and rests on the smooth incline at point B so of course again draw the object without any of its surroundings or supports let's go ahead and do that so once I drew the beam here, you draw the external forces being applied. I'm not going to go ahead and redraw the dimensions and so forth. But at point A, we see that we have a hinge. And a reactionary force for a hinge support is always going to be two components. One along the Y direction, AY. One along the X direction, AX. Okay, so here are the forces for this, the reactionary force for this um, support. Now for B, we have it resting on a smooth surface. In this case, the reactionary force is going to be normal or perpendicular to that surface. So it's going to be at this angle. And we see we have the triangle here. We have the, the slope, the rise, and the run, which you could, of course, calculate that that angle but of course you could still draw this here and here's the slope the rise and the run instead of solving for the angle this is basically all information that's needed to solve for the x and y component of the reactionary force at point b and this is your free body diagram for this problem so for this problem then we have determined the components of reaction at the supports a and B on the rod. So of course, this one is a little bit different. As you see, we have this kind of T-shaped bar. So this is one whole piece. And on support A, basically we have lots of rollers holding it in place. At B, we have a roller as well. We have the necessary dimensions. In this case, it's nothing but variables. We have the force P downward right in the middle of that beam. We have the dimensions L over two. Um, to get the respective um, location of this force. So let's go ahead and draw the free body diagram. So just looking at the beam here, of course, we have the force P. Now for the reactionary force at B, we know it's a roller, so it's just going to be uh, a force in the Y direction. Let's call it BY. Now for point A, you, I guess you can see it, you can say it's a little bit tricky, right? We have multiple rollers, so for each roller we have a reactionary force. But in this case, as we learn in a, when it comes to resultant forces, you could actually just simplify this. And since it's you could say it's normally distributed, right? The force will be equal among, among all the rollers here. You could just simplify it by just doing one reactionary force of course along the x direction since it's a roller we're dealing with a force perpendicular to the surface here so this is your free body diagram now we are asked to find the the reactionary forces a and b so as previous examples in other videos thus we have to do the static equilibrium equations right so for static equilibrium, the summation of forces along, along the F, x direction is equal to zero, as well as the y direction, as well as all moments um, along the respective points also equal to zero. So for the x direction, this is by is along the y, p is also along the y axis. For, so a x, since there are no other components in the x direction, we don't add a x is equal to zero. So there is no um, reactionary force at point A along the X direction itself. So we only have um, B. 
the reactionary. So in this case, we could do the sum of forces along the y direction equal to zero. So we have, let's go ahead and say <clears throat> upward is positive. So we have b y minus p is equal to zero. And of course, we could see that the reactionary force b y is equal to the force p here. Now, one thing to keep in mind is um, when we do, let's go ahead and do the sum of moments with respect to point A. The sum of moments must be equal to zero counterclockwise. Let's say it's positive in this case. And so we have, um, we're going to have the P force having a moment, making it go clockwise, right? with respect to A, so that's going to be a negative moment, P times the distance at perpendicular, PL divided by 2. Then we have BY actually causing a, a moment that's counterclockwise, so that's going to be positive, plus um, BY, which essentially is P, times the distance that's perpendicular, which is L. And right here, we see that just these two moments with respect to point A alone will not cancel out. And so that means it will not be equal to zero. But that doesn't make sense, right? Because we're talking about static equilibrium. The sum of forces and sum of moments must be e must cancel out. They must be equal to zero. So in this case, this actual... This support here actually has its own reactionary moment. Let's call it M of A. So this is this one was a little bit tricky since it does have rollers, but when it comes to fixed supports, there is a reactionary force as well as a reactionary moment, in this case MMA. So let's just assume that's positive plus MA equal to zero. And then just solve for your mo reactionary moment at point A. So the reactionary moment at point A is equal to negative PL over 2. And the sign convention negative essentially just means that it's actually in the opposite direction of what we assume. So in this case, it's going to be um, clockwise moment. And this is how you do your, this is how you solve these problems. So this is how you draw your free body diagrams. And of course, just remember to memorize the reactionary force depending on what support is utilized. And this is basically the foundation um, when it comes to analyzing structures or any systems. So this is something to definitely um, solidify your concept on to practice a lot to get a lot better at it.